Hello, good evening. It's Shante here. I'm here with some stuff today. Um, happy Tuesday. I hope your Tuesday is well. I won't be long before you, but I have some things I want to discuss. Not discuss, but to report to you. So I'm just going to get to it. Um, I am going to turn to the coronavirus because that's something we're still facing to this day. And yes, we're facing some civil unrest and they have not reported that. And I'm pissed off with that too. I'm going to have my final thoughts on that in a moment, but um, here with the coronavirus. So the John Hopkins website and the M, uh, New York Times um, COVID map is where I get most of my data. First part of portion of my data comes from the thing. I mean, excuse me, from the John Hopkins website and the states comes from actually um, the New York Times and by counties, it comes from the John Hopkins website. So you can find those at the John Hopkins website. You can sign up for the New York Times or Washington Post um, COVID articles for free. So you can do that. Um, so globally here in the um, around the country, around the 188 countries that have COVID-19. Good evening, Joseph. How are you? Um, we are at 13,273,537 cases of COVID-19 throughout the whole entire world. Here in the US, which we account for the fourth of the cases, we are at 3,426,053. And with our fatalities, we are sitting at 136,500, excuse me, 458. So we're close to almost the 140,000 death toll threshold. Thanks to the Sun Belt states. Um, around the globe with the top rising cases some are surprising uh we know brazil is not pr pr uh, surprising because they're at like close to two million they're at one million nine hundred and twenty six thousand eight hundred and twenty four followed by india are at um nine hundred and six thousand seven hundred and fifty two russia is at seven thousand seven and excuse me seven hundred and thirty eight thousand seven hundred and eighty seven peru is at three hundred and three thousand excuse me, 333,867. Chile is at 319,493. I don't know what's going on in South America. Mexico is at um, 304,453. South Africa, that is a kicker. And that's a shock. I know they were in the 150s, but they rise very quickly to the top countries with the uh, top 10 countries with the most cases are at um 298,292 now you have the UK half of these countries that pass the US UK is at 292,931 so Peru, Chile, Mexico and South Africa have surpassed the United Kingdom That's crazy. Don't know what's going on with the leaders there. I don't know if they're science deniers, but that's crazy. In the Latin countries, we have Panama at 47,173. Dominican Republic at 46,305. Guatemala, 30,872. Honduras, 28,579. The African countries... I know I reported on South Africa as one of them. Nigeria is at 33,616. Ghana is at 24,988. Cameroon is at 15,173. Kenya is at 10,791. Senegal is at 8,243. Now at the West Indies, which that's the side with the most cases. Keep in mind the West Indies is not too far from the U.S. Haiti is at 6,727. And I think the cause of Haiti's numbers being so high is because the Dominican Republic has nearly 50,000 cases. I don't know if the Dominicans are coming to Haiti and spreading COVID. I have no idea, but I'm assuming that's going on. Um, in terms of... Um, 
Jamaica, 600, I mean, excuse me, 762. Ghana's at 302. They went up by two cases. Trinidad and Tobago is at 133. Bahamas is at 103. Antigua is at 74. Antigua went up by three cases as of yesterday. Belize is at 39. They went up by like a couple cases. St. Vincent's at 35. Grenada still at 23. St. Lucia at 22. And Dominica is still remaining at 18. So you're telling me these countries with the lowest cases, you're telling me that the U.S. cannot contain the coronavirus? Because this is what it tells me. And this is all, like I said, comes from the John Hopkins website. I won't be saying these numbers out of my ass. I research these numbers. I take three to four hours to do my research. So here it is, guys. And the U.S., according to the New York Times map, New York is at 407, 875. However, our curve has been flattening. The cases have been flattening. It still remains the same. Followed by California, which is at 345,654. That's a lot. That is a high number from 336. So they went up by like nine, eight, nine thousand cases. Followed by Florida at 291,621. And they went up by over 9,000 cases as of today. But I'm going to get into Ron DeSantis in a few. Texas, 284,442. No, 284,242. And they went up about 10,000 cases. New Jersey at 177. 1,862. Illinois remaining still in the 150s, 157 and 42. Arizona, 128,116. They went up by a lot. They went up from like 114 all the way up there to one, so almost 130. And they also pretty much have a high infection rate in terms of COVID cases. Georgia, 114,791. And then you have North Carolina at 89,863. I skipped Pennsylvania. I skipped Massachusetts because their cases have remained the same. But North Carolina, well, actually, Pennsylvania is actually rising, but I think it's in the hundreds. But hey, Keith, how you doing? Um, uh, North Carolina is at 89,863. And then South Carolina is at 60,389. And they have a death toll of almost 1,000. And South Carolina, they have 48 members of their staff. I think their state staff that has like some cases, some symptoms of COVID. And the governor seems to not care. Now, in terms of my county, we have L.A., as the highest county in the U.S. at 136,357, followed by Cook County, which is in Chicago at 95,884, Maricopa um, near Phoenix, Arizona at 81,216, Miami-Dade County at 67,713, Queens, they surpassed Queens, and Maricopa. Well, Maricopa been surpassed Queens, but Miami Day surpassed Queens. Queens is at 65,000, I believe, 603. Kings County. Because Queens was first in the 65,000 tier. Kings County, which is in Brooklyn, at 60,120. The Bronx at 48,430. 37 and Harris County and Houston at 6 47,000 excuse me 369 now Florida as you know Miami-Dade County is now considered the epicenter of COVID-19 even though they are the fourth county with the highest um number of cases but they have the highest infection rate and the hospitals are 
almost at its capacity. And Florida, like New York, like unlike New York, Florida doesn't have enough resources um, to treat their patients like New York. But it all goes back to May 20th when Ron DeSantis criticized the state of New York and basically burn blasted the media saying how the media has not done its job and saying we're going to be like a New York but it was New Yorkers that flew and infected infected the people in Miami. Hey Janelle affected the pe Jamila affected the people in Miami. But you have the beach you had the beaches open during the peak of the pandemic that happened in the Northeast. You did not cancel spring break. A lot of young people got sick during spring break. They went home and infected their parents and their grandparents because a lot of Americans are now living in multi-generational homes. So they infected their parents. That's what they did. So the same Ron DeSantis who criticized the state of New York and said, somebody, you can, I'll sell you a bridge in Brooklyn, is now probably crying and not even answering the questions of why he did not mandate a mask wearing order, why he did not have phase plans of reopening, why did he reopen up the bar so quick and the restaurants so quick and the hair shops and the hair salons so quick and full capacity, knowing that COVID-19 is still here. That's because he listens to the current occupant of the White House on the reopening and there's no plans. They did not follow the CDC guidelines that was initiated and now they're blaming their CDC and they're blaming Dr. Fauci, which is so insane. Seriously? Seriously. This is absolutely insane. And of course, California, who has to scale back their reopening due to the rise in infections with almost damn near 350,000 cases of COVID-19. Oregon had to scale back on their reopening due to the rising infection rate. Florida seems like they're not getting the picture. Their case is almost at 300,000. They are one of the highest infection rates along with Arizona and along with Texas and Georgia. And South Carolina, we can't leave out South Carolina, even though they're not in those high numbers like them, but they're having a serious COVID problem too in their hospitals. Because people still gathering and wearing no masks. And keep in mind, their governor never issued a stay-at-home order. He issued a curfew. Never a stay-at-home order because he's also a Trump loyalist too. So let's not leave him out of the equation. Because that's where we are right now. Now with this whole um, coronavirus task force, a manifesto of lies... Not even the word. I think I heard so much lies today. I can't even keep up. So Mike Pence held the coronavirus task force with Dr. Burks, Betsy DeVos, Admiral Duran, the um, two senators from Louisiana, including Senator John Kennedy, the ignorant hillbilly, Steve Scalise, who is the um, House minority whip and um the governor of louisiana and betsy devos if i didn't mention her so i took some notes of what he said mike pence whole coronavirus task force briefing at lsu at the university with of uh, louisiana university state state university i think yeah politicizing reopening in schools and he said i quote him we're here with you to the people of louisiana we will be here with you until we put the coronavirus completely in the past okay whatever uh louisiana is the you in a unique position because they have slowed the spread and flattened the curve 
I don't know about that because they're seeing also high infection rates too. I didn't record their numbers, but they're seeing high infection rates. He said, very confident, confident they will do it again. But the governor said he wants to reopen schools, which I don't think that's a good idea because I'm going to get into the reopening schools in a minute. And he thanked the two Louisiana senators, blah, 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 blah. And um, he said, I'm going to quote him again, rising cases in the Sun Belt is serious. The nation um, deserves to know the ability to respond that we are ability to respond to the pandemic is substantially better than two or three months ago. When the coronavirus first came to Louisiana, we're in a quote unquote much stronger place and open up America, we should open up our schools and our kids need to get back to schools. This is all what he said. They said they perform 800,000 tests per day I don't know how true that is. And they said they're going to open up three more testing spots in Baton Rouge. And then he said, our mission to save lives and to protect those most vulnerable is by opening up American schools. So here's my take on this thing um, with that. And then, oh, last thing I want to add. Um, Betsy DeVos said it. It's not the matter of how we open schools. Is there are so many ways we can think outside the box. Many kids are harmed being at home these past months. And kids haven't been doing their learning. And we don't want to follow the CDC guidance by um, to be the reason. Excuse me. We don't want the CDC guidelines to be the reason why we can't reopen schools. And there's a very low risk of coronavirus. Now, this is what Penn said. There's a very low risk of coronavirus that young people are pretty low. So, the coronavirus is actually rising in young people, according to a CNN report a couple weeks ago. Especially in the South and the Western states. Because there are videos of these young people. These same young people that's supposed to be at low risk. At bars. And, excuse me, and pools. On beaches without no mask. Literally without no mask. Because Dr. Fauci, I was watching a little video thing and Dr. Fauci said, he said something about young people. He said the problem of in the South is that we're seeing an increase in cases. Mostly young people are being infected. Photos and pics of reckless behavior of congregating in bars without no mask. I trust the top infectious disease doctor, epidemiologist, Dr. Anthony Fauci. There's a lot of conspiracies from the right. There's some conspiracies from just people who don't vote that Dr. Fauci um, and the government have cooked up the coronavirus. I'm so sick of those conspiracy theories because 136 people, 136, excuse me, thousand people are dead. And that includes two pastors that I know, that I knew, one deacon from another church that I affiliated that I knew, my former neighbor back living on 1428 that I knew, I had two people that I know, one I used to work with, my colleague, and a person I used to go to school with when he was in the 12th grade, I was in the 9th grade, has COVID-19. And he's been feeling chills for like about two weeks. He's been taking safety precautions, but what happened, he went to a large gathering and did not know that he was, that it was going to get him. He took every necessary precaution and it got to him because somebody in that clip was asymptomatic. So when I hear this administration tout this nonsense about reopening schools because kids are being infected, kids are being uh, um, abused at home, there are counselors over the phone to talk to women that are being abused. 
There was a woman on TV showed you how you can get out of your goddamn home when you're being abused. There are so many resources for women that are being abused. There's so many telephone lines. There's so many virtual things that you, that they can do. So I don't believe this administration time and time again does these things because they're trying to politicize. They're trying to win political points so they can get reelected again. But not realizing of what they're doing to hurt this country. The list It's a laundry list of things that they have done. But the simple fact is they're using our kids, like Andrew Cuomo said, as guinea pigs. It's not the way to go. Reopening schools is serious. Kids are the most germiest little creatures in the world that wants to hug their friends because they haven't seen them since March. They want to high five. They want to play frisbee. They want to play basketball. They want to play tag with their friends. You know, they want to uh, write notes to their friends, want to touch their friends and share lunch with their friends. So it's just like telling a kid to social distance from their friends is the hardest thing they can do. In schools, especially when this disease is airborne, and some kids come to school sick because it's not their fault, but it's their parent who has to go to work because their manager don't want to hear that. It's telling right there. And I understand this single parent homes. I understand. But some of the, but at the end of the day, I, I, cause I can't speak for parents, but at the end of the day, putting your child in the classroom is a disaster warning. It is a recipe of a COVID outbreak. And what should happen, this $2,000 bill a month, $2,000 a month to each family, an additional $2,000 for your kid that Kamala Harris, Bernie Sanders, and Ed Markey is trying to put out is very substantial until the end of March. You can read the article, Google it. I think I read it from NPR and political that Kamala Harris along with Bernie Sanders and Ed Markey who co-signed on the bill that she's trying to put out I forgot the name of the bill because it's a long name but it's a very good bill I have a video on it you can look at my timeline it's a really good bill for parents and for single people and parent and, and for parents who have children because a lot of jobs have actual day people but there is going to be a second wave and it's coming it's coming between september to october it's going to come that's why a lot of companies have su suggested to stay home those who have office jobs they are working from home my mother is working from home my mother has no little kids but she's working at home to take care of my sister who's recovering from a surgery a critical surgery if I was still working, which I'm still looking for a job, I will be working at home. Literally be working at home. Which I don't mind. Because I'm a non-profit administrative professional. I will be working from home. Some people don't have that luxury. But we're seeing a second wave of this thing. And sending kids to school without no PPE being provided for the children because a lot of PPE is very hard to find. Gloves is very hard to find. You have to put markers markers up, signages up. It's very difficult to t check temperatures before you enter the school. I don't I think that's a recipe for disaster waiting to happen. So that's just my take on that. And I'm sorry I spent a long time on it, but I did. And also, Cuomo put more states on the travel advisory ban. I think that includes Ohio, Pennsylvania, I think Wisconsin. I'm not sure of how many states, but there are more states added. So I think it's about 22 states towards um, the travel advisory thing. And that includes, and the travel advisory is not just a New York thing, but it's a New Jersey thing. It's a, and it's a Connecticut thing. I think it's a good idea because. There's a lot of people from all these states that with these infections, they're traveling up here. Some from here, up here went down there knowing that there is high infection rates in the South and you chose to go down there. It's the dumbest thing you could possibly ever do. But I hope you get tested. That's my thing. And yes, Janelle, I mean, J um, Jamila, I, I 
thank you for agreeing because I have no kids, but I used to work with kids and I know that kids, because kids used to give me a cold and one of them gave me a cold that bothered my allergies and my sinuses. So I know, I know that sending kids to school is a, is a recipe for a COVID outbreak. But off a little bit of the COVID um, subject, Trump had this conference, press conference that was erratic, that was almost feel like I, I think he has early signs of dementia. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. It seemed like he did because he was just rambling on. He went from it was supposed to be a China Hong Kong trade thing. And then it just went to Joe Biden and his press conference today. Then it went to criticizing Bernie Sanders Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, Representative Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, to saying that they want to defund the police. Joe Biden wants to defund the police and wants to abolish the, no, wants to abolish the police. His um, plan to um, go back to the Paris Climate Accord is bad. All of this stuff, which that is not true. I hope that gets corrected. And like a press conference or like a, a tweet or something because Donald Trump is just lying again. And the fact that the press sat there, they all should have walked out because Trump was basically lying. And some and most of the stuff is not true. We all know he's a liar. For those who are from New York and New Jersey and even Connecticut, Trump is a liar. Trump is doing this to gain re-election points. He, we know exactly what he's doing and it's not working because the coronavirus is out of control we're two we're 3.4 million cases in almost 140,000 people are dead and counting we have no plan to reopen schools we're banned from going to europe we're kicked out of the west indies i'm pretty sure africans don't want us there in their country In Canada, forget it. They they shut the door on us, probably. So, pretty much, we're on our own. So, this erratic stuff, and he invokes some racist things. He wants to end the affordable housing program with Ben Carson, who's stupid enough to do it, which, he ha which they started evicting people on the low low. You read the article in the Washington Post about how people in Texas are getting evicted from their homes during COVID-19. This is why you never sit out in an election because it has consequences. And these are one of the consequences. Who's to say we will be in the midst of a pandemic in the third decade of the new century? 102 years later, we're in the same predicament as the people in 1918. But the difference is we have the technology and we have the advances. The problem is we have the most incompetent person inside the Oval Office. That is the problem. That's the problem. So there you have it. But on Biden's press conference, he did punch some jams on Donald Trump on how he needs to listen to the scientists. He needs to listen to Dr. Fauci. He needs to listen to Dr. Reddingfield, which Dr. Reddingfield needs to have a spine and say that we need to conduct 40 million tests per day. He also um, criticized him and hit him on the um, the economic plan and on on climate because this administration also have rolled back things on the climate and um, people that had asthma, which asthma was under control, are now are having more asthma attacks than ever. My elder sister is an asthmatic and anemic. She's she's a sickly one in allergies. And her asthma is out of control. She has, a, she has a machine at home. Poor thing. And her husband just sitting there watching her like, mm, you know, it's nothing that he can really do. It's something that she has to do on her own. My mother's an asthmatic and my mom sometimes her asthma bothers her. That's why my mom doesn't go outside because my mom's an asthmatic. I am mildly anemic. I just stay the hell away from people and I have allergies too. And my allergies never bothered me like this until this man came into office. It just got worse. So this is what I'm saying. Like, even though Biden is not everybody's ideal candidate, because it was 24 other people we had to choose from. And of course, my candidate dropped out December 2019. 
And I wanted her to be the candidate to be the because she almost could, could have clinched the nomination. But now we have Joe Biden. He's actually a decent human being. He also was criticized by Donald Trump. Donald Trump criticized him about the H1N1 swine flu and um, the Ebola crisis, not knowing that President Obama was the one that appointed his vice president, Joe Biden, at the time to handle those crises. And with the Ebola crisis, two people were dead. Only two Americans were dead. 136,000 Americans is dead from coronavirus. 2.4, 3.4 million people affected. Yeah. There you have it. But this administration also rescinded on their um, immigration thing. They did the backflip. After trying to kick out international students during the pandemic too. Because classes will, universities decide to rehab classes remain um, remote until there's a vaccine. Because they do not want to risk COVID to their students or to their faculty or their staff. I don't blame them at all. And Harvard and MIT, which is the top universities in the country or in the world, sued this administration for trying to send international students out of the country, which international students make up the profit for these institutions because they pay full tuition. Full tuition. Full tuition. I went to school with international folks. I went to a small liberal arts school, but they paid full tuition. They, they pay a lot of money. So edu they do it well because education is serious to them. It's very serious to them. So, and that was according to the NBC News. That he scaled back on that. And also the last thing I just wanted to, one of the few last things I want to say actually. In terms of the reopening of schools. Since we're on this subject. Trump's incoherent response to a reporter on CBS, at CBS says, how we tell parents who feels that it's unsafe to send their kids to school. And this is exactly what he said. I recorded some the words that he said out of his mouth. I would tell parents and teachers to find themselves a new person or whoever is in charge of that decision. It is a terrible decision because kids, children, our parents are dying from that. Dot, dot, uh, dying from that trauma too. And mothers can't go to work. And then he tells us, and then he was told there was a balance. He said, yeah, it's a balance, but we need to open our schools. So like I said, this is a whole politicizing thing. Donald Trump is incoherent. Donald Trump is showing early signs. So he's just going off the, the rails. Find a new person. So you want teachers to, what find a new person? What does, what does find a new person exactly mean? Children should find a new parent? Or teachers should find a new person? new profession or should go to Florida where the affections are because they're trying to open up schools too. So I don't know about finding a new person as smart as I am. I don't get the finding a new person to parents and teachers. If I was a parent, I would not be sending my kid to school. If I was a little kid during this pandemic and those who know me and know my mom and my dad, they would not send me to school. They will make sure they have internet all through the house so we can learn in school. My mother would actually be working from home. My father probably would be sweeping up or probably be working on painting houses if we were kids because that's what my dad used to do. And he would have worked with us on our homework and everything. And my mom would have checked it to the math and stuff. Like, you have to work with your kid. It's just plain and simple. And I know a lot of my friends, they actually work with their children on their homework. And I see it. You didn't have to go to college or not go to college to work with your kids with basic arithmetic, basic reading, basic writing. Sending kids back to school because they have mental issues. There's mental health professionals over the phone and virtual. There's social workers, same thing. For those who have autism, there are specialists that will actually come to your house with the PPE and everything to work with your kid. 
for those I know that have kids that has autism, they will actually try to, um, they will create them a regimen because they always have a regimen to do certain things. So once again, this administration is politicizing on everything because they're trying to win re-election. Don't be fooled by the crap that he's doing. But um, this whole thing with Jake Tapper criticizing New Yorkers, saying that Donald, I mean, to uh, Governor Cuomo, don't take a victory lap because it might come back. Um, if it wasn't for him, New Yorkers would actually be a, a lot more. New Yorkers would have been dead because he did a stay at home order for nearly three months, and because we're reopening in phases that's not even at 50% capacity or even the, the like a 25 or 33, it's good. Especially here in the city. A lot of people in the city, especially in my neighborhood, are taking, most of them are taking precaution, I can say. There's some folks in Harlem acting crazy, but even some of them are trying to take a little bit of um, precautions here and there, especially some of the older folks that live up there. You got... You got fools. You're always going to have a fool in each borough. But at the end of the day, you have people that take taking precautions. Protesters even took precautions. Because a lot of protesters did not get COVID-19. A lot of them went home and took their clothes off before they went walked in the door. So, New Yorkers have been doing what they're supposed to be doing. And a lot of them have been doing their own hair. And if they go into the hairdresser, some of them like will wait outside. And will not like go in there if it's full of capacity. Because there's a second wave coming at this. Plain and simple. But I'm just going to end this and saying like we we're even though we're in some critical times. We have to stay vigilant. We have to stay smart. We have to stay woke. We, but we can stay relaxed. I worked out today. Even though I'm feeling crampy, but I, I worked out today. Take a walk outside. Make sure you wear your mask. Make sure you wash your hands. Always wash your hands. You can have your same hands in the but it's nothing like washing your hands with some soap. If you want some soap ideas, yes, I ordered from Bath and Body Works before the whole firing thing. I have my soaps because other soaps will break my hands out. And if you can't afford the Bath and Body Works, there's... Dow soap is the best soap in the world. Soft soap is cool, but I prefer Dow soap. I love Dow soap. I have Dow soap near my kitchen sink. I have my bath and body soap in my bathroom. That's just how I do things because I grew up in a house where there was two things of soap near the kitchen and one near the bathroom as I grew up. Um, but yeah, stay sanitized. And if you don't have the correct PPE because sometimes masks is hard to find. You can make a mask. If you're artistic, that's great. Um, RT, excuse me, RT, art, artistic, not autistic, but artistic, yeah. Um, if you got bandanas or scarves, put it around your face and you can do that. Um, gloves is very hard to find. I mean, gloves, is, they say it's a double-edged sword, but I wear my gloves because there's some people that are nasty in my opinion you can also um make sure you have your hand sanitizer i carry about three hand sanitizers and one packet of wet ones because i'm i'm just that anal but um yeah protect yourselves out here but also you could go for a walk you can exercise outside or inside i exercise inside because i like my peace and quiet but um stay safe y'all and thank you so much for watching. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, it's Shantae Berry. It's my first and last name. C-H-A-N-T-A-Y. Um, Berry, B-E-R-R-Y. And thank you so much for support. I, this is my first time doing this in the spirit of quarantine. I really don't do a lot of videos. Since I've been on social media, I just take a lot of pictures. But these videos have helped me. And watching different live streams of different people. My friends are doing live streams i support them so thank you thank you thank you thank you i greatly appreciate it and please tell your friend tell you to subscribe to my youtube channel i'm not like a excited personality but i just try to, to keep people informed because um 
this man is lying. One. And two, I like politics. And I like business. And I always give you the job reports on Thursdays, which that's my thing to report because I was a business major and I was in accounting concentration. So thank you once again. You have a great night and be safe.